All right, we've made it to the Outer Banks. Official. <laughs> it's official. It's exciting to us because every year we have certain locations that we definitely want to get to and everything else in between is kind of willy-nilly. Um, but this was one of those places this year and so to finally be here, you know, we were delayed getting here as well because we didn't realize that the campgrounds didn't open until April 12th and we wanted to come in March. Long story short, um, yeah, it's just, it feels good to finally be here. That said, <laughs> we haven't seen the beach yet. It's a little anticlimactic if I'm being honest. I kept seeing signs saying Kitty Hawk this and Kitty Hawk that and I'm like, TJ, are we there? <laughs> Are we in the Outer Banks? There's no grand entrance. There's no like big sign. You're in the Outer Banks. It's literally just you start seeing signs for places that you're familiar with. So yeah, we entered at the north end up at Kitty Hawk and the plan is to drive all the way down to the bottom of the main island down to Hatteras um, and then work our way back north throughout the week until we're finished and ready to, well, exit up at the north again, rather than taking the ferry over, over we think. So, yeah, happy to be here. <laughs> into further into the outer banks and this is more of what i was expecting we're actually in the national park now so. right the hatteras national seashore that first part when you first get on the island is like the kitty hawk hill devil hills area is just like a town anywhere honestly like it didn't feel like anything special but now we're surrounded by sand dunes and I don't know this is this is what I imagine <laughs> We've been camping in Frisco National Park Campground. Yes. The beach is just a short walk. Yeah, maybe a quarter mile yeah. over the dunes and out of the campground. Yeah, right over the, the boardwalk, which is what we're on right now. So yeah, we're headed to the beach now to catch the sunset, which is starting to happen right over there. Enjoying our evening. Yeah, and this beautiful scenery around us. This morning we're in line for the ferry over to Ocracoke from Hatteras to Ocracoke. Yes, we actually have some Airstream friends that are staying over there right now. So we're going to go visit with them and check out what Ocracoke has to offer. It runs from 5 a.m. to midnight and during peak hours it runs every half hour and then in the wee hours of the morning when I'm sleeping it <laughs> runs every hour. So yeah, looking forward to it. This is going to yeah, be a fun day. It should I think. be fun. First time on a ferry with the van. You're right, it is. We were originally actually planning on taking the Airstream on the ferry and staying on Ocracoke, but when our plans kind of got waylaid with the National Park Campgrounds not opening until April. We, we came from the opposite direction, so. There, there was, was no, no need. need. For the ferry. Exactly. The ferry is free from Hatteras to Ocracoke. Now there are other ferries from Ocracoke back over to the mainland that are paid ferries. Right. Um, so yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, it should be fun. <laughs> All right, well, we got here at 10.15 and it is now... 12.19. Yes, so I should have known when we got here and I asked the guy, 
will we be on the 11 o'clock ferry? And he laughed at me. <laughs> I should have known <laughs> that there was going to be a problem. I've been waiting for a couple of hours now. And normally they run on the half hour, but they take a break at 12.30. So we thought that we'd be on the 12.30 ferry, but there isn't a 12.30 ferry. So we'll be on the one o'clock ferry, oh. we hope. <laughs> Well, that answers the question why so many dump trucks are going over to Ocracoke. They're doing paving over here and they have more dump trucks lined up <laughs> than I've ever seen. It was crazy. There must have been, well, it was a minute and a half straight of videoing. So I don't know. There were just tons of dump trucks. Crazy. are walking Ocracoke. The village of Ocracoke. That's right. And the, the village part of the island is really just maybe a few square miles. So so the, the island of Ocracoke is... I think it's maybe 14 miles. 14 miles of national seashore. And then the small area at the very end where the ferry comes is called village. the village right. of Ocracoke. So really, I love Ocracoke. In all honesty, I kind of wish that we had stayed in a campground over here because I don't know, it's just a great fun town. There's coffee shops and breweries and restaurants and the marina and it almost has like a little bit of a Keys vibe to it. It's got just, just real relaxed, laid back, but fun vibe to it. It's absolutely beautiful. So we're walking to the lighthouse now. Yep, the Oak Croak Lighthouse. Okay, and we're gonna go back downtown, check that out again, and, look, and see the sights there. And then we're gonna meet up with our Airstream friends again and maybe have some dinner. Yeah. Loving it, loving it, loving, loving it. it here. <laughs> So the Outer Banks are known for their lighthouses. This one on Ocracoke is actually still a running, working lighthouse, so you can't go up in it. But the other three that are up on the mainland, you can go in when they open, which is uh, April 19th. So um, that's actually this coming Friday, so hopefully we'll get to go up in at least one of the lighthouses. Well, we are changing campgrounds today. Still staying in the Outer Banks, but moving, moving from the southern end down by Hatteras, we were in Frisco, uh, and we're moving up to the more developed part of the island. Yeah, moving up to Oregon Inlet Campground today. Yeah, it's gonna be up near Kitty Hawk and Kill Devil Hills and a lot more stuff to do. Looking forward to it. It will be another National Park campground, so it's gonna be dry camping again. But, you know, it's, that's one thing about the Outer Banks. It's, it's really expensive to stay here with amenities, with hookups at the private campgrounds. When we researched it, you know, depending on the campground, it was anywhere from maybe $50, $60 a night, all the way up to, I mean. Over a hundred. Yeah, so, yeah, that's, <laughs> we don't pay that kind of money to camp. Um, 
we give ourselves a budget of $30 a night average for the month. And so sometimes we'll splurge and we'll spend, you know, quite a bit more than that $30 a night. Uh, but then we offset it with free camping and whatnot. So anywho, uh, the national park campgrounds are $28 a night. So they fit within that budget, but you don't get anything really much but a campsite for that price. There's no electric, no water. There are showers, but they're cold showers. There are bathrooms like with flush toilets, not pit toilets. So yeah, excited to move further up the coast. And um, while we do love the more rural areas, uh, there wasn't a ton to do down there. You know, the beach is certainly the main attraction. So moving up where we are, there's gonna be a lot more to see and do. All right, with bad weather on the way, we decided to take advantage of this perfect afternoon. Beautiful day. And check out the Wright Brothers Memorial. So that's where we're headed. This granite marker behind us marks the location of the launch of the Wright Brothers' first motorized flight. Yep. And then when you look down there, there are four other markers that mark... Each landing spot. Yeah, so... progressively got longer. Exactly. They were able to fly it four times before crashing it. Um, so each marker marks those locations. for flight number four uh, at 852 feet. So that's significantly further than the third flight at 200 feet, which when you look back at the marker, I mean, it's, it's a long ways. So after the fourth flight, when I said they crashed it, they didn't crash it while they were flying it. They were actually they finished the last flight right. and then a strong gust of wind came and flipped it over several times, destroying it. Yeah, so right, I'm to... sure they were pretty disappointed. <laughs> they finally got it after years of experimenting and figuring things out right. and they finally get it. And <laughs> the stupid thing blows over and gets destroyed, but still. And pretty... they get all worked out in the end. So. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Where are you off to? <laughs> We're going to try our, our hand at fishing in the outer banks. <laughs> I'm trying to do some wade fishing this morning. A little too windy for the fly, but maybe tomorrow. The wind's supposed to die down and we'll be able to get the fly rods out. Our friends that we met down in Ocracoke came up to where we are. Yep. And Jeff uh, is a really big fly fisherman. Big fisherman, period. So it's perfect for TJ. Yes. Now TJ has someone to fish with. Hi. Three, how are you this morning? <laughs> Good, how are you? Not too bad. What are you guys fishing for today? Whatever will bite. Yeah, whatever <laughs> We're not picky. Bite. Okay, <laughs> but what kind of fish are you expecting to possibly get? Redfish, trout, flounder, whatever will bite. <laughs> We're expecting fish for dinner tonight. Don't oh let us God. down. Oh my God, now the grocery store is right down the road. <laughs> down no the, problem. Uh, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Down to the fish market we go. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I 
caught this delicious Quaker ba Quaker State bottle. <laughs> filled with all filled kinds with of fishing goodies. nets. Mm. I must say that's a sexy look for you. I like that. Yeah. All right. Well, the guys have gone fishing again today. This is Mary. <laughs> And she and I are walking out to um, where they're fishing to bring them lunch. Aren't we so sweet? <laughs> We're good wives. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and they're not going to bring us fish for dinner, so it's even worse. <laughs> uh, so today they're fishing in the location of the Body Lighthouse, which I don't know if you can see it behind me back there or not. But after we walk down this road to bring them lunch, I think we're going to check the lighthouse out and see what kind of views you can get from the top of it. Yep. <laughs> so where are you keeping all the fish? <laughs> you did catch one. Did you? Yeah. What'd you catch? Small striper. Nice. Say something entertaining. <laughs> He's got that good look going again. <laughs> all right, the boys are fed and we're headed up to the lighthouse. Series of spiral steps, and those will land on a landing, and then you'll walk over and go up another set. So, we ask that you keep one person on the steps at all times, no more than one. The people coming down will have a uh, uh, will have the right of way. So, if you look up, see somebody coming, let them stay on the landing, let them come down and pass, and then you can then you can go on up. Made it to the top. I'm not gonna lie, that was really hard. <laughs> and you feel this um, pressure to go kind of fast because the, uh, an engineering study showed that um, for safety reasons, it's best that only one person be on the staircase at a time. So it's 10 stories, so there are 10 landings. So basically you are trying to get through your flight so that the next person can start and then you've got to keep going so that you're not holding people up. So definitely, uh, definitely a little bit of a workout, but man, it's beautiful up here. All right, last day in the Outer Banks. I was able to pull TJ away from the fishing. <laughs> Just in time for, drum roll please. Duck donuts. <laughs> this is pretty incredible donut job. Oh my gosh. So when people told us we had to go to duck donuts, we were like, I mean, it's donuts. Donuts, you Not know? I mean, don't get me wrong. We love donuts, but uh, these bring it to a whole nother level. These are <laughs> custom. Well, first off, they are fresh made. When you yeah. order them, they fry the dough. They're made to order. On the spot. Yes. And then they're custom. You choose the icing, the drizzle, the everything. So we went a little crazy and got a dozen donuts. <laughs> For two people. But well, we're going to bring them back and share with our friends. No That's my excuse <laughs> anyways. <laughs> uh, but they were um, surprisingly not crazy expensive. Uh, 17 bucks for a dozen donuts that are custom made. Yeah, absolutely. So lunch of champions. All right, well, we've come to Jackie Ridge State Park. And first thing on the agenda here is to eat some donuts. Now I'm in a food coma. <laughs> let's uh, let's go climb some sand dunes. <laughs> Jackie Ridge State Park is home to the tallest system of sand dunes on the East Coast. Yeah, it's completely free to come to. It's just a day use park, so there's no camping here or anything. But um, yeah, I think it's just a, an opportunity to get out and enjoy some of the beauty here in the yep. Outer Banks. They also have a hang gliding school here too, so if you guys are adventurous and want to get into that, this is the place. I want to do it. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, wrapping it up here at Jockey Ridge State Park in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. What'd you think of it? Oh, it was pretty cool. It is. It's hot. <laughs> it's, it's really hot. hot. We're here, what, like mid to late April, and I'd say I'd advise coming out either early in the morning or late in the evening, yeah. like sunset time would probably be pretty nice here. It's the beach without the water. <laughs> <laughs> um, that said, it's a cool place to watch, um, to fly a kite, or if you don't have a kite, to watch people fly kites. Uh. But it's free, and um, you know, it's kind of cool to say you visited the highest sand dunes on the east coast yeah just maybe plan accordingly if it's a hot day for sure right and <laughs> make sure you climb the the highest one because there's a great view at the top of the ocean yeah you can actually see the water on both sides from the from the tallest dune yep very cool <laughs>